Hey guys, Nish Quick here. This is going to be a video of me not really doing a trailer breakdown or even a reaction to the latest Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance trailer from the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase. It's more of me kind of like, um, I don't know if you guys saw my video on the Metaphor Re Fantasio trailer breakdown where I just kind of go through the trailer and give my thoughts on it. I'm going to be doing that here because I was watching this, it's it's not even the trailer, it, what is it called? It's called the, it's like the all new information live stream that Atlas did. There is a lot of stuff in this that was not even like remotely mentioned at all in the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase. And I was thinking like this is the only really big major announcement that stuck out to me at the Partner Showcase. And I, you guys might know, some long-time viewers of the channel from this past summer might know that I've been playing SMT5 on and off, I live-streamed it a bit on the channel as well, and I am a little conflicted on this game. Like, the title you might see is like, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance looks great, but, like, it's, it's something like that. I'm very excited for this, but my thing is, it may not be a day one purchase for me, and as we go into this trailer, well, you guys will understand a little bit why I feel that way. If you guys are excited for SMT5 Vengeance, like I am, even though I might not play, even though I might not play a day one, but if you're interested in Atlas games like Persona 3 Reload, Metaphor Re Fantasio, hit the like button, subscribe for more content like this. It helps a lot. All right, let's. These new enemies, like these new demon designs, look really good. Like. What I loved the most about SMT5 when I was playing it is some of the demons looked so like viscerally like frightening and scary and like <laughs> the main villains like the quartet I guess you could call them are like really frightening. Look, look at them. Look at these demons. I love the design. I forgot the artist. I think his name is Doi. Doi. Doi-san. A lot of new areas. I like this grind railing stuff you got going. So a lot of what we're seeing here is from the new Vengeance route. I think that's what it's called. Because there's the cannon route, there's the Vengeance route. We got new characters and unlike any thing we've done in SMT5, looks like not only we'll be able to use our demons as party members, but also other humans as well. Like of course we got the new Vengeance character that's coming in this sort of like a Persona 5 royal thing as well. Uh, there's Naho Hiho. <laughs> perfect name for a perfectly designed demon. I love to see them back. I think it's a Shohei Yakumo and a Nua. They're pretty cool characters. Yeah, overall, overall this looks really good. I am seeing this, and it's unfortunately... It doesn't look like it's 60 FPS. But I did see some of the trailer at 60 FPS. A lot of this stuff, even in this like trailer going into the livestream stuff, a lot of this wasn't even in the partner showcase, like, what the heck? Yeah, that snake imagery is heavily present in this game from what we see with these um, new villains we got. Yeah, look, look at them! Such amazing designs. Lo I love it. Special program spotlight. It's releasing on June 21st. So yeah, it's releasing this summer, but it's also releasing the same day as the Elden Ring DLC, so I don't know how I'm... which one I'm gonna play first. Probably not this, and I'll tell you why later. This is just a recap of everything. How Nahobino was formed and Dot and all that. That's how the story begins. Offers an exciting story from SMT5. The same story. And a newly added route. Gameplay systems have been improved overall, so this is this is like a wait, addition of new content. Quality of life, yeah. So this is sort of like a Persona 5 Royal experience, but what's really interesting is 
with this package that you're getting, SMT5 Royal, <laughs> SMT5 Royal, SMT5 Vengeance, you will be able to play either story, the original story from SMT5, which like I have my physical copy up there, or if I get this on whatever platform I choose to get it on, I could play the new story and not even touch the original story because I'm almost finished with the original story on Nintendo Switch. And what's really cool is in both of those versions, it seems that all the quality of life stuff, all the visual enhancements, all of the demon enhancements, all the new demons also, I think, will also be in both versions of SMT5. And not both versions, but both stories available in SMT5 Vengeance. I saw a lot of people on social media a little bit confused on that, so I, I think it'll be explored more over here. The two routes, yeah, let's see this. Two choices at the very beginning, so that's that's good that it's not like Persona 5 Royal, because I, I would say even luckily I didn't play Persona 5 Vanilla, I just got into the series of Persona 5 Royal. Same goes with Persona 4 Gold and I never played Vanilla. And Persona 3 Reload, you guys might know I never played any version of Persona 3. So it would kind of have sucked if the new enhancements were just kind of trickled in through the story and you'd have to play the whole thing over again. Because let's see, Canon of Creation is the story told in the original SMT5. The second route, Canon of Vengeance, follows the scenario of the original, but with significant changes in the middle and later stages of the story. That is where it's unlike Persona 5 Royal, because Persona 5 Royal's significant overhauls happened in the third semester, which was basically the end of the game. Of course, you have Kasumi and Maruki, who are new characters, who are interwoven into the story of the original Persona 5, which was basically most of Royal, but the main story of Persona 5 but the main story of Persona 5 Vanilla basically stays the same. Unlike here, of course it says the middle and latter stages of the story will be significantly different. I feel like if we're getting these new characters, which we'll see later, and if other like characters from the original SMT5 are going to be more heavily involved in the story, I feel like the beginning is going to be pretty different as well. I mean, the intro where you become the Nahobino will probably be the same, but... Things later after that will probably be pretty different. Yeah, none of these, like... Oh yeah, Hayataro is there, but like some of those other characters... Like, like, these characters... These four, they were not present in the, in the original game at all. Yeah, in the canon of Vengeance, four brand new female demons named the Cadiz 2. I don't know how to say that. I, I, that's the closest, I guess. They're like the main villains. Lilith. The only design for this demon Lilith. Interesting. A certain purpose. New designs with Masayuki Doi. That's who it was. Yeah. Fantastic designs, by the way. Look at them. Look at these. Like, some of the best looking <laughs> SMT demons I've seen in a while. Yes, and here is the, like, at new Atlas girl a lot of people refer to them as, like, Marie from Golden or Kasumi in Royal. Here we have Yoko. Protagonist wandering through Dot meets a mysterious girl named Yoko and decides to adventure with her. She looks very similar to Nahobino, actually. <laughs> Wonder if she'll have her own Nahobino form. Demons attack humans, creating a world of chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, same, same kind of premise. He meets Yoko Hirohimine and decides to work together. Yeah, a lot of what we're seeing over here, this kind of scenario stuff over here, not even seen in the original game. Of course, Yoko wasn't in the original game, but... It, I feel like a lot of this stuff is going to be very different. Yeah, Goddess of Vengeance, Kadistu, and Yoko Hiromine. The new... Yeah, what story awaits you in the new route? So, I want to take some time now 
let's see oh yeah it's going into the gameplay now i want to take some time right now to say kind of like hey why am i not getting a day one because you might have been watching you were like oh you're so interested in this game it looks so cool why aren't you getting a day one well let me kind of preface that a bit first of all i have like a lot of games i want to play backlog stuff i want to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I want to play the Elden Ring DLC, I have so many other games in my current physical and digital backlog that I've yet to play. But the biggest reason is I have still not, three and a half years later, still have not completed the original story of Shin Megami Tensei V on Switch. And you might be saying, oh, this is like the definitive edition, this is fixing all the story stuff, this is giving you a better story, this is giving you better characters, just drop that and play this. Well, I kind of want to get to the end because I am basically at the end of the game. I am at the point where I'm trying not to spoil it, but basically I just got a very important demon in my party and I'm in this very, very big open area, which is probably like the last area in the game. And I'm going to fight some very powerful enemies and powerful big bosses. So those of you who have beaten the game will probably know where I am in the game. I just want to get it over with so I have that kind of context going into Vengeance and being like, oh, this is better, that was not as good, kind of like that. And in hindsight, I feel like, dang, I wish I never played the vanilla and just waited for this. Because that also leads me to something else I want to talk about. Alice does these re-release things. Like, I was telling you guys, I was lucky, I never played Persona 5 Vanilla, never played Persona 4 Vanilla, never had to get any other copy of Persona 3 also. But this is my first time being hit by that Atlas re-release thing. I, bu I bought the Vanilla version, and now the Definitive Edition is coming out. They're doing it a little better in this version, where the new story feels almost completely different from the original story and it's not like golden or royal where there is a lot of like similarities to the vanilla version but what i am kind of upset about is again i'm rebuying another smt5 and a lot of the quality of life stuff in this wasn't in the original game so a lot of the demon fusing the compendium stuff all of that i'm just gonna have to like do it all over again and that's kind of like the biggest annoyance with this and that's the big reason that i'm probably not going to get a day one because i'm very excited to experience this new story these new characters this new scenario and all that but i have already spent like so many hours in smt5 might as well maybe wait for a sale or play some other games before i jump back into this universe and I'm still like really looking forward to playing this and since it's multi-platform now I'm going to get it on PC because I want to play this as good as possible make it look as good as it can because it looks and runs fine on Switch but there are hiccups there are performance dips there are performance drops there are times in the game I feel like hey this could look a lot better on better hardware so I'm gonna get it on PC I can play it on Steam Deck I can play it on the PC and whenever I do get it, I'll stream it for you guys. But that's my whole, like, biggest worry with this game. I don't think I'll get a day one because I still need to beat the original. And also, like, Atlas, come on. Maybe just put everything in the game at once. And I'll give them a pass with SMT5 Vengeance because later on, we'll see that because of maybe resources, time constraints just a lot of factors going into it, they couldn't realize their full vision for SMT5. So this is kind of like their director's cut and their way to be like, hey, this is our full vision for what we wanted in the game. As for Persona 6, I am very... I'm going to be very careful with that game. I really hope that they put as much as they can into that game at once. And with Persona 3 Reload... I don't think we're gonna get a definitive edition or a second version with the fem C or the female protagonist, but I don't know. I don't know. You can you can never tell with Atlas nowadays. Anyways, let's continue this. A lot of this is the same. 
SMT5 will also include the addition of a new DOT and dungeon along with other new features for smoother DOT exploration. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is mostly for the Vengeance route. New quests. What I'm kind of confused about is, is all this new content, like the new dungeon, the new quests, is that also going to be in the canon route? Will all of that be in the canon route, or is that only for the vengeance route? Familiar press turn. They're going to show something really cool here in just a sec. I'll tell you guys when we see it. Yeah, a lot of this press turn stuff, yeah, basically the same. A lot of it is the same. Enemy's weakness, yeah. The combat in this game is freaking amazing. I Probably the best turn-based combat system in any video game. Okay, here it is. In this title, all ally, all ally demons will now have unique skills to emphasize their characteristics. I I can't believe that every single demon in the game will have their own unique skill, and it's kind of like the essences. I'm assuming because in this game you have essences each demon has its own essence but they kind of like overlap like for example like this guy's essence might be that he is weak to electricity and resists physical blocks wind and you can move that essence to the nabino to get those weaknesses and resistances if you chose to do so but now that kind of uniqueness is getting transferred over to the skills like I can't read this because it's in Japanese, obviously, but this looks like it's this demon's own passive skill. I forgot this demon's name. I even have him as a persona in Persona 3 Reload, but I forgot what his name is. But this is like a unique skill to this demon. A lot of these unique stuff, yeah. But what I think, I don't know if they explain it more over here, but I think that a lot of those unique skills and unique attacks can be transferred over to other demons and other party members, even the Nahobino and stuff, if possible. I think so, don't quote me on that, but we'll see. Yeah, every demon now has a chance to shine with these new features. That's so cool. Experiment. Yeah, I, I love when a Persona or SMT game really encourages you to fuse and get more demons to do things like this. That's amazing. Amazing new feature. Dive deeper into the signature characters and demons, okay. Yeah, so this is just showing a lot of the new quests and stuff. A lot of new demons over here. A lot of new quests. Yeah. Fusing. <laughs> I, I love this. Nob Nahobio. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> They should have called him Naho Hiho. Because <laughs> it's like Hiho, you know? Jack Frost. Naho Biho, that's hilarious. Yeah, a lot of these designs look fantastic. The average playing time for one route in SMT5 Vengeance is 80 hours, totaling to 160 with the second route. So for newcomers who have not played any version of SMT5, if you play Canon and Vengeance, it'll be like longer than Persona 5 Royal, basically. But for someone like me, getting this game and playing through Vengeance route only is still worth it. It's like a 80 hour long meaty RPG experience, like equivalent to like the length of a Xenoblade or a Persona game or something like that. And that's cool. Like, like I said before, the reason why I'm not really prioritizing this game right now is because so many other games to play and... Still gotta beat the original. I wanna have that kind of context going into this product information. Here is some weird stuff with the DLC. I, I don't know how to feel about this, but it's whatever. Yeah, June 1st, entirely multi-plat on every single thing. Switch, PlayStation, PC, Xbox, everything, everything. 
yeah, th this is annoying. Like, all this stuff is DLC, which you have to buy again. It's kind of annoying. Like, these Mitama stuff, like, that, that helped me quite a bit in the game. These two new demons look amazing, but it's part of the, I don't know, digital deluxe edition. Atlas's day one DLCs are always very annoying. Yeah, you'll get the DLC at a reduced price. I don't know. I don't freaking know. New DLCs. Yeah, look at these. Two new DLCs will feature Dagda, a demon from SMT4, and a completely new demon, Konohana Sakuya. Interesting. I love her design. I love this new demon, Konohana Sakuya. I have not played SMT4 yet, so I'm interested to see what he'll do. I don't even know if I'm going to get this DLC stuff, because, like, it's just additional quests and stuff. What is cool is the DLC quests and all the DLC from the original SMT5 is going to be included for free in Vengeance. So that's that's really nice. That's really good. Yes, we'll enjoy the challenging battles. Yeah. Pre-order bonuses, pre-order bonuses. Yeah, this is this is all really weird. Like, look at this. You get this bead to recover HP for all allies. Both can be used infinitely in battle. Like, what is the other one? Yeah, you get a gleam grenade to inflict a small amount of damage to foes. And a Haredo bead to recover HP for all allies, which can be used infinitely in battles. I mean, I think this is only a pre- Yeah, this is only a pre-order bonus, but that is- an OP pre-order bonus for a game like this. I'm just saying. Save data from the previous SMT5 can carry over three demons to the demon compendium. Three demons is nothing in the grand scheme of things, and honestly, most people who have already played SMT5, who have other systems, I'm assuming are not even going to get it on Switch. The whole big reason for this game to go multi-platform is to get it on other platforms so it could be played with better hardware. I wish they had a better offer and a better like save transfer situation and bonus for Switch users because three demons is it's not much. I don't know. Oh, you'll also get the ability to get different items depending on which ending you got, okay. More details on the website, okay. Oh, this is the Q&A with the director. I don't want to watch this too much because it's pretty long, but the main gist of it is he was saying that there's a lot of things that he wanted to add into SMT5. The whole development team wanted to add into this original SMT5 version, but they were not able to. So let's hear that quote real quick. When developing Shin Megami Tensei 5, the development was filled with various ideas from various teams. All these ideas were appealing and fit the trope of SMT. We were not able to implement all of them in the course of development. That was very disappointing to me and to the development staff, and it definitely was the driving force behind SMT5 Vengeance. More on the... Re okay, yeah. So, that's good to hear, and that makes me more excited to play this Vengeance route. Because initially, I was just like... Oh, it's like a re-release of the game. It's like a royal edition. It's just gonna have like little bits and pieces here and there. It's just gonna be like a DLC thing. No, I I think this vengeance route looks like it's gonna be pretty substantial with new additions to the story, new character moments, new scenarios, and overall just a better Shin Megami Tensei 5 story. That's the big complaint a lot of us had. The gameplay is great, the combat is great. The whole traversal exploration stuff was amazing. The music was great. The visuals, the art style, all of it was great. The story was just kind of mid. So if they have a good story in this, then I'm, I'm down. I'm all ears. But I just gotta get done with some other games first, like the original SMT5. Oh, here's, here's where they talk about quality of life stuff. Level cap is unlocked. Able to level up to 
level 150, speeding up of skill cutscenes. Like, see, see, this stuff is like, why didn't you have this in the original? Why? It's all like such simple stuff. Miracles on and off. Like, this is all reallocation of protagonist stats, addition of item that allows you to reset. Yeah, a lot of this is just simple stuff. Rotation of the mini map. Let's see. I want to see that. Like, why are you keeping save anywhere? That's the craziest thing. Like, saving was like a big, like, it, it was like a skill thing in SMT5 almost. You had to know when to say, when you should say, when you shouldn't say, kind of like that. Because if you had a game over, it was like you were kind of screwed for a lot of it. So you had to like constantly be saving. And you had to always go back to those save points, those ley line founts or ley line fountains or whatever they were called. Now you can save anywhere. That's kind of um interesting i don't know how to feel about that but a lot of these like are simple quality of life things that i'm like did you just forget to add them in the original did you just not want to add them in the original like don't do this with persona 6 like they did the same thing with persona 5 royal multi usage of a cons wait what that that one really fast Multi-usage of consumable growth items is now available. Consumable items like... Oh my... Again, simple quality of life thing. If I use like a grimoire or a gospel or an incense, I'd have to use it one at a time, one at a time. And it, it wasn't like, for example, in like a Souls game, if you have like those consumable souls, you can use them all at once or like however many you want. That simple feature was not in the original. And I'm like, why do you save this random mundane quality of life stuff for the definitive edition? Like, yeah, that basically wraps it up. That's basically it. Yeah. So that is it for my thoughts on this. I'm going to trim it down a bit. It went a little bit longer than I expected. My whole take on this is this game looks great. If you have never played SMT5, Shin Megami Tensei 5, any version of this game there's only one version if you've not played smt5 this is your opportunity to do so and play both routes if you want play whichever route you want to play and it'll be great it'll have all the quality of life stuff it'll have all the new demon stuff all the new fusion stuff all the new demon abilities and it'll have the new story stuff as well if you choose to do the vengeance route for someone like me i have played like 60 to 70 hours of the original on switch and if I buy this, I don't think there is any real need to play 80 hours of the canon route again. I'll just play the Vengeance route, which will be its own like dedicated game with its own dedicated story with these new characters. And I'm looking forward to it, but I just don't think it's a day one for me right now because I have a feeling that on places like Steam and all that stuff, it'll probably go on sale over like the course of uh, the next couple of months after its release but also like i have to beat the original i want to play some other games as well but i think this looks great and the best thing is this doesn't seem to be just like a royal re-release and it's not even like a smt4 apocalypse because i've heard smt4 apocalypse is like its own kind of like sequel to smt4 correct me if i'm wrong in the comments down below but this is like a different like take on the SMT5 story with new characters and a new scenario. So I'm looking forward to how all this goes. So more than anything, I'm more excited than worried. I'm just a little bummed that like some of this quality of life stuff could have been in the original and again this is another case of atlas re-releasing their games and i'm like you didn't even need to do that <sighs> like the re atlas re-releasing stuff is it's just a little annoying i'll cut them some slack for this one though because like the director said there's a lot of things that they couldn't like achieve with the original smt5 release even though it was a really good game they couldn't achieve a lot of that because of time constraints or budget or whatever. They just needed more time to flesh it out. 
and this is like their true vision of what they want smt5 to be so let me know in the comments down below are you excited for smt5 vengeance shin megami tensei 5 vengeance is launching on june 21st right yes june 21st 2024 and then let me know what you think about all the new changes, all the new characters, all the new quality of life features. Are you like also annoyed with some of Atlas's choices for releasing their games? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, this is Nishquick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like, there it is. Shin Megami Tensei 5 on the Nintendo Switch. Go play it. It's on the Nintendo Switch right now. But I think it'd be better if you just wait for Vengeance if you haven't played it already. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left. And if you aren't subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button on the way out? I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and see you later.